Hello everyone and welcome to the game of World of Warships. Today is free play, it's me play, and I'm in the Grosser Core first. I'm also running at increased speed here until we get to some action. But I'm here starting with the divisions in the north, so the logical plan is for us to try it. Hey, we are here on Tears of the Desert in a free point domination game mode, and well, it's obviously a tier 10 battle. So, if you have a destroyer, a raider cruiser, and a battleship, you definitely want to do something with it and try to go after an objective. And let's just uh, get back to regular speed here. Now, also, if you're wondering why you didn't see me aim here the first shot, it's because I had the camera unlocked. But now we are back to my viewpoint. So anyway, overall this is looking pretty good, we have a destroyer in each cap, and interestingly enough the enemy team isn't contesting any of them. Right, so we got two caps without much of a hustle. And that's interesting, because the enemy team has an Asashi, a Benson and a Harugumo. While the Harugumo doesn't have the best concealment, with concealment expert it's definitely good enough to try to contest something. And Benson and Asashi, I mean they really have no excuse for not trying to take a cap. And I know there is Raider, but let's face it, A doesn't have the best places for a Raider ship to hide, neither does the C cap from our position here. It's like those destroyers could have just contested it and gotten away with too much, without too much trouble if Raider ships appeared. So, you know, well, I mean, it's amazing for us. What's also amazing for us is that there are two enemy battleships pushing in pretty hard here at the A cap, and I'm not exactly sure what the plan is, but how do they think they're getting away with this? Like, I'm a uh, cool first, and I have a North Carolina tier pits and a Des Moines here as support, and then there is a gearing, so they're pushing towards torpedoes. They might be running, uh, well, the Bismarck might be running Hydro, but those are two tier 8 battleships. So they don't really have a chance of surviving here. Now I'm still trying to focus down their own. Because I feel like I'm well enough angled against those battleships so they aren't the immediate threat and that drone could just disappear, drop into concealment and then heal up and return later. So I really want to stop this drone from getting away before I go help out with the battleships. Unfortunately my guns are not really <laughs> that helpful. German battleships don't have the best accuracy there is. And oh look at that, there are some torpedoes coming here. Now I immediately pop Hydro because those are Sasha torpedoes and yes, the Sasha used reload booster and there is another some coming. Now you could argue I should have been running Hydro earlier, but we had no real indication that an Sasha was around here. Now the enemy Benson got taken down, which leaves the Harumo and Yasashi with unknown whereabouts. But I mean, yeah, um, and Asashi has 20 km torpedoes, he could be anywhere on the map and potentially torpedo me, I guess. So anyway, the battleships are dealt with and in a situation like this, it's very important that you push in and that's why I'm just uh, continuing to go forward here. Like, we had more ships on this flank, so it's very important for us to use that advantage, sink the enemy ships. I mean, we also have free capture zones right now, so it's looking pretty amazing. And hey, I got a decent hit on the drone. Unfortunately, he's still floating, but maybe my teammates can finish her off. So after, we to, after this drone is taken care of, we want to reinforce the C cap. Well, we don't really have to hold the C cap, right? I mean, we have such a big advantage. What we could do now is just fall back to B and defend, which is probably a good idea. Now, most of our battleships are here. There is still a conqueror at the C cap. Now, at the C cap, this conqueror should probably try to get in concealment if he can. And the Kagero, it's unfortunately we lost the Kagero. I guess he outraded, probably didn't pay attention where the enemy cruisers were located. Right now, all we have to do is keep our advantage, right? Now, there are some uh, Sasha torpedoes coming this way. There is the Z-23 who is potentially searching for the Asashi. 
Now, unless this set 23 has radio location, there is no real way for him to find the enemy destroyer. Unless he just purely gets lucky. Now, I was considering going here through the center or going here more towards the flank. I feel like spreading our ships out will give us better firing angles. But I have to keep in mind that the Asashio is somewhere around here. Now, the way the torpedoes came from, I assume that Asashio is staying close to A. Maybe he's waiting for us to leave and then tries to go back in and just take the cap after we left. Might not be the worst move the Asashio can do, although I feel like the Asashio should probably... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Asashio could also just try to hunt down our battleships, I guess. Now, the Asashio has 20 km torpedoes. If you look at the minimap, you can see my firing range is 20.6 km. So, roughly, that is the circle where the Asashio could be and still hit me with torpedoes, which means I have to be somewhat careful. Maybe maneuver my speed a little bit, maybe turn a little bit. Then again, as I said, the Asashio might just be staying behind to take the A cap and not hunt us. Now, our Z-23 is still lingering there. He is determined to defend the A-cap, and I'm, I think if the Z-23 has radio location, that might be the right choice to go. If it doesn't have radio location, then he's just taking a huge gamble that might not pay off. If the Asashio has left, then he's pretty much useless, and we could probably use him around here. Now, ship-wise, we are equal. But we have a massive point scan. Just because the enemy team ignored the apps in the beginning, they didn't contest a single one. They played it way too careful. Now the enemy team has to do something drastic and they have to do it soon. And look, our fleet here is in a very good position to defend the sea cap. Now that Minotaur might be a little bit too aggressive, we don't want to push the enemy team. All we want to do is defend. And considering they have radar over there, that Minotaur might just get into a bit of trouble. Now, our Harugomo is spotted. I really want to shoot the Harugomo, but unfortunately, he disappears. Now, meanwhile, the A cap is taken, so we at least know where the Asashi is. I have a feeling that Z23 doesn't have radio location and is just going around in circles there, but at least he is in a position to defend A. Now, my division might in the Limon could turn around and help out with Raider might be a decent option considering that we aren't pressed that heavily at just yet. Now my plan is twofold, right? I'm at tier 10 battleship so I want to be at the front lines but I want to get some cover so that I can't get farmed by those cruisers. Like if those cruisers can sit behind an island and farm me I'll go down rather quickly without being of much use to anyone. Now the Minotaur here got hit by one torpedo and it looks like there is a radar running right now. So best thing the Minotaur can do is just get closer to this island. I mean, there aren't many ships with firing wings. If that Minotaur just goes forward and goes go hugs the island in front of him, he can just weather the storm, wait for the radar to disappear while angling against the Des Moines. But it doesn't look like that's what the Minotaur chooses to do. Instead, he goes full broadside towards the Demon in order to get some torpedoes off that will probably, probably never hit anything. Unfortunately, I don't have firing angles at the Demon chest yet. And there goes our Minotaur. Meanwhile, we also lost our North Carolina, unfortunately. So, let's see if we can't make the Des Moines pay, and it looks like those torpedoes are actually going to hit, so uh, I was mistaken by thinking those were useless, but I still feel like we could have taken out the Des Moines without losing the Minotaur if he had just gotten and found some cover whilst the radar was going. Now here we have a fully broadside Montana, which means if I get lucky I could score citadels on him. Probably should have aimed a little bit further back, but you know. 11k damage, I'll certainly take. Now, there are still quite a few enemies around, so I want to use this island in front of me as cover against most of them. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the tier pits did not think along those lines. The tier pits could have just hacked these islands, found some cover, and dropped from concealment, gotten a heal going. And yeah, 
I'm afraid that we will lose our tier pit soon. So, ship-wise, this is suddenly looking pretty problematic. Now, I'm alone here. I mean, I do have my division made in a gearing. But he is not drawing any fire. He's obviously staying concealed. He might be able to sneak in and take the sea cap. He might be able to help with some torpedoes, but I'm the only ship the enemy is trying to sink here. Now, here in the north, there's a 23 and the Des Moines are still hunting the Asashio. Now at this point, we just can win by surviving. So the and the Nimon really doesn't want to fight those ships in the open water. So if they can take care of the Dasashio, it's probably a good thing. And then maybe they can just they conceal. The enemy team still has the Harugumo. And the Harugumo might just try to take the B cup at some point. Now so far the enemy team is just so not interested in camps that we are probably going to win this by points if we play this right. Now, I'm not sure what the Des Moines is thinking right now. I guess he angled this way to make those torpedoes, but it's it's really no mystery that I'm here. And, you know, being full broadside to a core first, my RNG can't always be bad, you know? So, uh, yeah, uh, that, was, that was a nice treat. Now I'm using some Hydro again, mostly because I'm still afraid of the Harugomo, and that Harugomo could have maneuvered himself in a position to torpedo me. Harugomo doesn't have the best torpedo reload, so I have that going for myself, I suppose. But a more immediate threat is the enemy core first. The enemy core first is still pretty healthy, now I took a big chunk out of him, but I'm still losing this battle. And there is the Harugomo. So I have to be careful, there might be torpedoes coming this way, but I have Hydro running. I want to angle against that core first, and ideally I want to get close enough to Hydro the Harugomo. So going for the upper belt here, I'm getting some nice penetrations, but I'm now close enough that I can actually see the Harugomo. And now I'm switching my focus there. Now, of course, the problem is the way I'm currently going, I will be showing soon quite a bit of broadside to the enemy core first. But I really want to get some damage into this guy. Don't get overly lucky with my shares and here I go down. Now, I felt like damaging the Harugomo was much uh, more important than just going after the core first and you can see my Des Moines here is in range and he can hopefully take care of the Tarugomo and that puts us at 981 points so even though the center is contested this is now this is now pretty much uh, going to be a win if our remaining ships can survive a little bit longer now Des Moines here he can drop into concealment and I think that is what he is trying right now. All he has to do is survive a few seconds longer. And then it's just a win. Here we are with the results. Maybe not the most impressive game, but still a pretty decent one, I'd say. And you see, both teams had three ships remaining, but just the enemy ignored the capture zones for most of the battle. And that's ultimately what won us the game. So I earned myself the Confederate and the Devastating Strike, scoring 181,000 points of damage. So yeah, quite a nice result, I suppose. So yeah, I also uh, got quite a bit of potential damage with about 3 million, even got some spotting done, and my secondaries also contributed quite a bit. Now I don't have manual secondaries on this ship, but I do have the secondary range. So I guess it's a bit of a hybrid build between tanky and secondary, which works quite fine for me. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.